We've looked a lot at evaluating limits this semester, and so I think it's a good time to take a look at all of the things that we've done and look back at all of the tricks. The main thing we want to do when we're trying to evaluate a limit, for example, limit as x approaches a of f of x, is just take the number a and plug it in for x into the function. Now this doesn't work all the time, it works only when f is continuous and a is in the domain of f. It's still something that you should try every single time though. So there are two types of limits that we've seen. The limit as x approaches a and the limit as x approaches infinity of a function. Now it's important to look at what this x is approaching. If it's approaching a, a number, or if it's approaching infinity. Infinity is not a number, so we have to deal with that a little differently. So remember, on the last slide, we said that if you have x approaching a, you can just take a and plug it into the function. But now, if a is not in the domain of f, you might get something like 0 over 0, which is not a number, and it's not an answer for a limit. So what you have to do if you get 0 over 0 is a bunch of algebra to try to cancel some stuff. We'll talk about that later. Now if you get a number over 0, so maybe 1 over 0 or you know negative 5 over 0, your limit will be either positive or negative infinity, or maybe even the limit will not exist. But it will only be one of these three options. Now taking a look at limits as x approaches infinity, usually you have a fraction, so it'll be one thing divided by another thing. And there are some shortcuts to figure out what the limit's going to be. If the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom, then the top is going to be a much bigger number, and so you're either going to get positive or negative infinity for this limit. But if the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, what you need to do is divide the coefficients of the largest power of x on the top and on the bottom, and that will be your limit. Now if the degree of f is less than the degree of g, then the bottom is going to be way bigger when x approaches infinity. And so you're going to get 0. But again, these three tricks only work if you see the limit as x approaches infinity. Now let's take a look at the case when you have 0 over 0. So if you plug in the number for the limit and you get 0 over 0, what do you do? Here are some examples. They might show up like this. Limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 16 over x minus 4, or the others that you see here. So if you take that limit number and you plug it in, you're going to get 0 over 0 in every single one of these cases. Now if you remember, 0 over 0 is not an answer. It's not an answer for a limit, and it's not a number. You need to do some algebra tricks. In the first one, what you should do is factor and cancel. So factor that x squared minus 16, and then cancel the x minus 4. In the second one, you see a square root. The trick with this one is to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, which would be square root of x squared plus 25 plus 5, not minus 5. And with the last one, you see an absolute value. So you need to think. The top and bottom are basically the same except for the absolute value. So try plugging in numbers and see what happens. The next case we're going to look at is if you get a number divided by 0. So when I say number divided by 0, I mean something that's not 0 divided by 0. This always happens at a vertical asymptote. Some examples would be stuff like this. <clears throat> now if you take a look, always try plugging in the limit number. So if we plug in 2, and if we plug in negative 1 in the second one, this is what we're going to come up with. So that's a number divided by 0. This is different than the previous case when you got 0 divided by 0. The answers to these will either be infinity, negative infinity, or the limit does not exist. To figure out which of those it's going to be, take a look at the top in the first case. The top is going to be positive. Nope, scratch that. It's going to be negative. We even got negative 2, right? So it's going to be negative, and the bottom is also going to be negative because x is approaching 2 from the right. So on the bottom, 2 minus a number bigger than 2 is going to be negative. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, 
and so the limit's going to be infinity. Now with the second one, the top is going to be positive, but the bottom is going to be negative because we're approaching negative one from the left. So one minus maybe like negative two, that's a negative number. So positive divided by a negative is a negative, so the answer is gonna be negative infinity. So let's take a look as, as to why we should think that a number divided by zero is infinity or negative infinity. Let's take one divided by 0 0.000001. Type that into your calculator, you get a million. That's a big number. But that 0 0.000001, that was a number really close to zero. Let's pick a number even closer to zero and take one divided by that number. We get an even bigger number, right? So what you need to think is that if you take one divided by zero, you get the biggest number, which is infinity. Now, infinity isn't a number, but it's the biggest thing you could possibly imagine, right? So the same thing happens if you divide by a negative number that's close to zero. So if you take one divided by negative point zero 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 one, you get negative a million, which is a big negative number. Similarly, if we change the second one to a negative sign, we get a bigger negative number. And so one divided by zero could also be negative infinity. Now, I don't ever want you to write this. I just want you to think that a number divided by zero is going to be infinity or negative infinity. Now, before we talk about infinite limits, I wanna discuss why we should think that one over infinity is zero. Infinity is like a big number, right? Well, let's take one divided by a big number. You get a number that's really close to zero. If we divide by an even bigger number, we get a number that's even closer to zero. And if we divide by the biggest number, infinity, you get zero, which is as close to zero as you can possibly get, right? And same thing with negatives. If you divide by a big negative number, all these become negative, but negative zero is still zero, so it doesn't really change anything. So I want you to think that one divided by infinity is zero. Now let's talk about infinite limits. So as x approaches infinity, if you ever see this on a limit, for example, limit as x approaches infinity of x squared over one minus two x, or the other ones that you see popping up here. Now think back to those shortcuts that I showed you earlier in the video. In the first case, the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom. So that means, when x approaches infinity, meaning x gets really, really big, the top is going to be way bigger than the bottom. Now in the second case, the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom. You see an x cubed on top and an x cubed on bottom. Think about what happens here. And in the last case, the degree of the top is smaller than the degree of the bottom. You have an x to the fifth on top, but an x to the 10 on bottom. So in this last case, what's going to happen is you're going to take a number and you're going to divide it by a way bigger number. So in the first case, you're going to get negative infinity. And the reason is because the top's way bigger than the bottom, you're either going to get infinity or negative infinity. Now you need to think what happens. On the top, you get infinity. Definitely, it's a positive number. But on the bottom, you get a negative number. Positive divided by a negative is going to be negative, so that's why negative infinity. In the second case, since the degrees are equal, you take the coefficients in front of the x cubed, so negative 7 on top and 4 on bottom. And in the last case, the bottom's way bigger than the top, so if you think back to a previous slide, if you take 1 divided by infinity, you get 0. Similar thing here. Now that last slide showed the shortcuts for coming up with the answer. But that's not a good mathematical reason, and that's not a legit answer for the limit. Here's how you actually evaluate these limits as x approaches infinity. So here is the first example from the previous page. What you're going to do is divide both the top and the bottom by the largest degree of x that you see in the denominator. So we're gonna divide top and bottom by x. 
Notice how I still wrote the limit as x approaches infinity. Now you do some algebra simplifications. You simplify the top to x, and the bottom simplifies into two separate things. So 1 over x minus 2. Now here, what you want to think is what I'm about to write in red. But you don't want to write this. You want to think this, but don't write this down as your answer. So on top, you're going to have infinity, right? Because x approaches infinity. On top, you just have x, so you're going to have infinity. Now on bottom, 1 divided by infinity is 0. Remember that previous slide? And then minus 2, so you're going to have infinity divided by a negative 2. So the answer for this limit is going to be negative infinity because you have infinity on top and a negative number on bottom that gives you negative infinity. So remember, to evaluate infinite limits, meaning the limit as x approaches infinity, you have to divide top and bottom by the largest degree of x that appears in the denominator.